Welcome back to the Thrifty Food Plan channel, friends. Uh, it is Jay, the creator slash facilitator here on our little YouTube community. This is the last sort of meal prep, um, batch meal making of my last 10 day grocery haul, which I will link above and below. I also will link below uh, the two other videos that I made based off of this haul, just showing sort of what I have been eating during this 10 day period. So I've got some chopped cucumbers left over and some chopped peppers left over and a tiny, tiny bit of romaine. I will say the bagged romaine in the three pack, it is keeping way better than when I just buy a bunch. Um, that said, this is not going to be enough, <laughs> enough food for big salad for me. Uh, for the next couple of days. So I am gonna go ahead and make my chickpea salad, uh, which was on my meal plan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse and I'm gonna drain and rinse these beans. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and prep this salad. I think I'm gonna use kind of the salad fixings that are left and just have side salad, which I can either do with my chickpea salad sandwiches or with uh, the new dinner I also need to prep. So let's get to it. Hello. All right. So I've got my beans in here that have been rinsed and drained, and I'm just going to show you how I'm going to make the salad pretty basic. Uh, so I have a tiny, the dregs of my regrown green onions. Um, they are not going to last another time. So I'll need to get green onions when I go to the store again. I'm gonna just take what I can salvage off of this and put it in there. I don't always put onion in my chickpea salad, but if you like onion, you can. You also could use some onion powder if you've got that, if you want to. Um, but the big things that I know that I need um, are gonna be some dill relish. And I had, to, this was like the last of a, last of one that I had already. Oof, old person hands can't always get things open anymore. All right, so I'm gonna do like two tablespoons of dill relish. I'm gonna rinse this off really quick. Sorry, I can't figure out how to make it so y'all can see the bowl and see me, and it feels awkward, but I'll keep working on it. I'm just not a videographer. I'm a regular person. All right, and then the next thing I'm going to put in is the junk food item that I bought at the store. Total junk food. Got me some plant-based mayo. Haven't bought this in I don't know how long. Um... In the comments in the video, uh, the the food haul video, grocery haul video, someone did say that you can make um, vegan mayonnaise from uh, like the aquafaba and chickpeas. You also can make it with tofu. So just do some Google searches if you don't want to buy the prepared junk food. So I'm gonna start with like two tablespoons of this mayo. And I need to get a spoon. Sorry. Or a fork, as the case might be. I'm going to mix this up. And then for my green onions, um, one thing I would just say is that like, I use scissors to cut them. It just seems easier. And I can trim off the brown parts. Again, you don't need the onions, but I have them, so I'm gonna use them. 
they're not going to regrow again, so I might as well go ahead and use them. Use onion powder. Use finely, finely diced yellow onion, sweet onion, red onion if you're an onion fan, or just leave them out if you don't have any of that. Be totally fine. I'm going to use a potato masher to try to mash this a little bit, give it a little bit more of the consistency of a chicken salad or a tuna salad if it's mushed. to be mushed some more. You know, you just get it to the consistency that you like. And I clearly like mine a little mushier. gonna give it a little taste. All right, for me, I want some pepper in it. I don't think it needs any salt for me, but you should taste yours and season it to your liking. Before I eat this, I'm just going to cover it either with a cloth or some saran wrap and I'm going to um, put it in the fridge and just let it settle in the fridge for a couple hours before I actually eat lunch. So I'll see you in a few. Okay, friends, it's time for me to put my lunch together and I'm hungry. So I have a toasted English muffin. I use English muffins because I can get whole wheat Kroger brand, pretty cheap, and I can use them for sandwiches and buns, and I just buy them instead of regular bread, and they're whole wheat and cheap. All right, so I know that I want to get like at least three lunches out of the chickpea salad. Sorry, videographer, I am not. Uh, so I am going to use this little ice cream scoop to try to portion a little bit. So I will do... One scoop. Wow, that's a lot. Might be able to get multiple meals. Two scoops. All right, so this is definitely going to be enough for three sandwiches for sure, maybe four. All right. Gosh, I'm, I have been craving this for so long, I'm so excited. All right, so. All right, got myself a little sandwich. I'm excited for that. Mm. And then, do want to have a little side salad here. So this is the last of the romaine that I prepped. I'm just going to do a little side salad. Hopefully I'll have enough to have side salads for a couple of 
meals. Got a little pepper left over, some cucumber left over, but a very small portion, as you can tell. That's why I'm not continuing to just eat salads. Then I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, balsamic vinegar. This is a pear flavored balsamic. Somebody gave me a set of these for Christmas a couple years ago and I'm still eating through them. Uh, just a little, little bit of quote unquote dressing. I'm gonna add a little pepper to that because that's how I like it. And this is going to be my delicious lunch. Yummy, yummy. All right. Hi, friends. Uh, so I'm getting ready to make dinner. And again, this is a super, super simple recipe. Um, and I just wanted to talk about one thing before I get into making it. So potatoes, you need five cups of shredded potatoes. You could buy some hash browns instead of shredding your own, but I'm going to shred my own. And then a bag of broccoli. Very exciting. Now the ingredient that I'm using that I'm assuming none of y'all have, <laughs> or very few of you have, is this cheese sauce from uh, Well Your World, which is delicious and vegan. Um, and my guess is most people don't have this. Now, if you're vegan, this cheese sauce is basically made with nutritional yeast, potato flakes, uh, some spices, right? Like onion powder, garlic, paprika, turmeric, gives it the yellow flavor. Um, and there are two ways that you make it. You can either make it with water or you can add some cashews, which makes it super creamy. I don't have any cashews, so I am just gonna make it with water. But if you don't have this, um, I'm gonna drop below kind of a recipe for a cheese sauce you can make um, that's vegan. If you are not vegan, feel free to make your own cheese sauce and there are two ways you know that you can do that if you've got a little butter and milk and cheese and maybe a little flour just make yourself some cheese sauce on the stove top and if you don't have that if you have two boxes of mac and cheese like boxed mac and cheese not the creamy kind the kind with the powder just take the take the cheese packets out of those boxes, reserve the pasta for a later use, and just make your own little cheese sauce with what comes in the powdered mac and cheese box, okay? So just wanted to talk about this because it's an unusual ingredient that I'm sure a lot of folks don't have. I'll put a recipe down below for vegans, and if you're not vegan, make your own cheese sauce with real cheese or with the packets in a mac and cheese box. All right. Okay, so if you, like me, are shredding your own potatoes, remember that you need to kind of press them and get as much water out as possible, um, right? Just try to get as much water out as you can. And I'm using paper towels, but you also could use a regular towel, okay? See all that water? A lot of water. We want to get as much of that out as possible. Okay, so this really is like the simplest recipe in the world. So I've got potatoes in here that I have tried to get some of the water out at least. Ooh, really big pieces of broccoli. I got the cuts because I thought they'd be smaller. But let me try to break some of these. And put the broccoli in. I'm gonna take out the big chunks because those are not gonna work. Usually the broccoli cuts are like smaller broccoli pieces. How weird. Okay. All right. So that is one bag of broccoli cuts with some of the more gigantic pieces taken out. And then, okay, hold on. And then I made my cheese sauce in like a blender. I think I've probably got like a cup and a half of cheese sauce maybe. Just using what I have. Nope, it's probably more like a cup. 
more like a cup. So I'm gonna get most of this in here. I am gonna reserve a little bit to put on top, okay? So I'm just gonna mix, mix my potatoes and broccoli and cheese sauce up. Then I'm just gonna scoop it into, I think this is a nine by nine or eight by nine pan. I'm just gonna scoop it in here. Now, if you wanted some extra protein in here, um, you can add, you know, I would recommend a can of chickpeas, um, but whatever bean you have would be fine. Um, I had plenty of protein today already, but if you wanted to add some in, I might recommend chickpeas. All right, and then I'm gonna get the rest of the sauce out of here. Just kind of smoosh it on the top, okay? All right, and then this is gonna go in a 350 oven. I am gonna cover it with some foil for the first 20 minutes, and then for the last 10 minutes, I'm gonna take the foil off. Mm. Pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna put foil on, gonna go in the oven, 350. After 20 minutes, I'm gonna take the foil off, and then I'll cook it for 10, at least 10 more minutes. All right, that's what we got. Okay, friends, so here is my broccoli potato cheesy casserole. Um, after the 20 minute mark, I did take the foil off. I also increased the heat uh, to 375 and I let it go for another 15 minutes. So ended up being 20 minutes at 350 with foil, take foil off another 15 minutes at 375. I am very hungry and very much looking forward to this. All right, I have served up about a third of the potato broccoli, potato broccoli bake. Got a little piece of fruit to go with it. Uh, so this should feed me for three nights. Very excited, yummy, yummy. Okay, so this is one of those tell the truth moments. That was not yummy, yummy. And I couldn't quite figure out what I did wrong. Um, and then I looked at the cheese sauce that's been in my pantry for a bajillion years. Literally had been in my pantry a bajillion years. Um, the Well Your World cheese sauce is delicious. It's just not delicious two years after the Best Buy date. So I will not be eating the broccoli and potato bake. I'm gonna have another chickpea salad sandwich for dinner, uh, probably with two clementines instead of just one. So I think that this meal would turn out really good and yummy the way that I remember it um, if I had cheese sauce that wasn't well past its best by date. That's not a slam on the Well Your World cheese sauce again. It's mine's just too old to eat. So don't do that. All right, I'm gonna have another chickpea salad sandwich for dinner. Not gonna show you all that again. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry, this was a little bit of a bust. Um, before we go though, let's do look at at least the dollar amount for the chickpea salad. And we will try the potato and broccoli bake um, at a, another time and then I will do pricing on that. Boy, did I mess this up. So the chickpea salad sandwiches are an absolute bargain, <laughs> absolute bargain. And I will be able to stretch it to four sandwiches, um, which is great because I'll need them for lunch and dinner for two nights. 
Um, so can of chickpeas, 79 cents, two tablespoons of dill relish, 47 cents, two tablespoons of the vegan mayo, 28 cents, English muffins, four of those whole wheat, Kroger brand English muffins, 107. The total to make four servings was 262 or 65 cents a serving. So definitely a bargain meal. And obviously the omnivores out there, you all could use uh, eggs. You could use a can of chicken drained. Um, you could use shredded chicken instead of the chickpeas because this is just like a riff off of chicken salad, tuna salad, egg salad, except for vegans, thus the chickpeas. So you be you based on whatever it is you might eat. So because this is the last what I eat off of that 10 day meal plan, I just want to pause and take a look at what was on the meal plan. Definitely had oats with raisins and apples across uh, the last 10 days. Um, I'd say as well, a couple of days I had bananas too. So a couple of days I had, uh, I had my oats with like a third or a half of a banana, depending on size and a tablespoon of peanut butter. That was delicious, I have to say. I didn't end up eating any smoothies across the 10 days because I was just eating through those oats, but still have it if I wanted or need it. Uh, had coffee, drank coffee every morning. I have eaten through a ton of fruit. Um, eight, I've, I've got like one clementine left. I've got a ton of apples left. Um, I did eat a couple of bananas, but I froze some uh, to use later. I did make the homemade lemon hummus and ate that with carrot sticks. And once that was over, did have some air pop popcorn uh, for snack across the week. Lunches, did eat the big salads uh, with my pinto beans until I got to the last little bit of the romaine, at which point I made the chickpea salad sandwiches that you just saw. And uh, given what happened, I will be eating those for lunch and dinner uh, until it runs out with uh, the side salad until it runs out. Did have a sweet treat every day based off of the sweets that I was gifted um, from the work retreat I went to. Did eat through the summer lemon rice soup and bread. Also ate through my black bean nachos, um, which I did end up eating as tacos one night instead of nachos, equally delicious. And then obviously I've had a big old fail with the potato broccoli bake. Um, that that did not go according to plan because one of my key ingredients was no longer uh, tasty or edible. So I'm going to eat through those chickpea salad sandwiches, the side salads that I have left over. And my guess is this is going to end up being a nine day haul instead of a 10 day haul. So that's kind of where we are ending up with the meal plan um, based on that last 10 day haul. Okay, clearly, Thrifty Food Plan channel friends, this is a moment when the meal plan did not go according to plan, and I could not figure out a way to save that potato and broccoli bake. I have made it before, and it was delicious, and so I really do think it's just because my powdered cheese sauce was past its prime, shall we say. Um, so dinner fails are part of life. I feel like, um, could not figure out a way to salvage that one. Had another chickpea salad sandwich for dinner. That was fine and I love that. I've been craving it, so I'm happy to have it. Uh, am curious, like when you all have dinner fails, which I feel like inevitably has to happen to everyone, like how do you handle it? <laughs> how do you handle a dinner fail? Do you eat it anyway? Like I'm not, I'm not eating my dinner fail. Um, do you eat it anyway? Do you hack it until it's edible? I couldn't figure out how to do that in this situation. I'll take your ideas down below. Or do you do what I did and you just scrap it and find something else to eat? Um, would love to get y'all's thoughts and comments below. And then I also just wanted to say, Martha, on one of my recent videos, you asked me if I really mean it when I say yummy, yummy. And, 
And what I said when I replied to you in the comment was like, it's largely anticipatory because usually by the time I'm cooking, like I am very excited to be eating because I'm hungry. <laughs> and I typically only make things that I like. It's not that I never make anything new, but I typically like the ingredients. So it's like an anticipatory yummy, yummy. But this is clearly a situation where something I made did not end up yummy, yummy. And just being transparent with you, Martha, and with everybody else here, this is one of those moments when I did not get it right. Did not get it right. Um, but if anybody wants to try a potato broccoli bake, I will put in the description box below a very, uh, what I would call a more complicated recipe that I have made before that is delicious um, from a woman called High Carb Hannah. It's totally vegan, and I'll put it in the description box below. That is delicious. I just don't have all the things to make, make it her way. And clearly, simplifying that recipe with very old cheese sauce was not effective. All right, thanks so much for visiting. I'll be back clearly sooner rather than later uh, with a new grocery haul. Do all the things you can to support this channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in a couple of days.